G'day, just doing a video today showing um, what they call High Star MM DVM hotspots. It's uh, currently the fad that's um, with ham radio operators at the moment. So basically, what you've got is you get a digital mode radio that connects through a box. And that box has also got Wi-Fi to the internet and you talk to people in different rooms using different digital modes. This particular one, handheld I'm showing you here, does the Yaesu system fusion or C4FM. It's the same as what my uh, FT991 uh, 991A does here. So right now, the 991A is listening to America Link. Now it's listening to a signal which is being transmitted from this little antenna on this hotspot. Uh, and on the screen on the hotspot, you can actually see it's uh, the amateur radio station's call sign. Um, and it's telling you now that, oh, and there's the person that's responding to him right now. Okay, so I'd read a little bit about this, and a, a friend of mine, Les ZL3LM, um, wanted to uh, wanted me to configure some stuff up for him, and uh, specifically, he wanted me to um, create one of these little SD cards which goes into the uh, these little devices. Basically, they consist of a a MMDVM modem. This is the modem here, which basically has the uh, a radio chip on it and a DSP chip, oh, sorry, a microprocessor, that talks to a Raspberry Pi. Um, the chip that's on here is um, does all the digital signal part as well as the transceiver part all in the one chip. The... Uh, the um, STM32 processor basically handles the uh, DSP between the two and the encoding onto the internet. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that's how it works. Um, but one of the things I found when I was looking on the internet was there's all these MMDVM boards, and it confused me. I didn't really want to buy anything built up because I like tinkering. Um, so anyway, what I've worked out is that if you've got a single radio and all you want to do at home is get on the air you basically need just a single uh, board like this with the Raspberry Pi or um, like myself I love tinkering I had some orange pies um, and here's, here's, here's one a little this is one that I made up out of an orange pie so it's exactly the same thing but it's my configuration if you like now typically the Chinese with their orange pie, the board, the pins on the board are around the are around the opposite way to what a Raspberry Pi is. So the modem instead of sitting nicely on top of the board sits out here. That plugs in down here. So you can see when this board goes in, it sits in here like that. And that's why the case is a weird shape. <laughs> But one of the things I did like about the Orange Pi is it has a separate uh, antenna and it's got a much faster processor. Um, it's a, uh, I think it's dual or quad core, uh, whereas the Raspberry Pi is not. <laughs> I'm not sure what cores it has. But one of the downsides is the damn thing runs so hot, um, I was getting it, it was being very unreliable for me. So I had to, I had some old fans from some notebooks I stripped years ago, probably 10 years ago, I managed to find these um, and in, in a short time I um, just hooked up on MOSFET which I desoldered off a board to one of the GPIO pins, so there's a resistor in there or somewhere, um, I could probably give the circuit to someone who wants it and uh, did a little bit of Linux programming so it just with the Linux program it reads the temperature on the board and if the temperature is over a certain point, it turns the fan on. 
if the temperature is under a certain point, it turns the fan off. So it's a very crude form of PID control. And what I do is I put that, it's a, that was a little bash script, which I put into a cron job. Um, so every minute, it quickly checks the temperature, turns the fan on or turns the fan off, depending on the temperature. Uh, and that's worked very well. It's kept the boards nice and cool, um, and they've been very reliable. The added benefit, of course, with the Orange Pi board is it's got an Ethernet interface. So, And these boards support power over Ethernet. There's a couple of links you've got to do on the back of the board. And so I can have uh, just a little power injector. And I can house this up in the ceiling if I want to, if I want to get more range out of it. Um, so that was my solution. And it worked quite well. But my friend Les, um, he's got a Raspberry Pi. Um, so I had to go and buy one of these, really. I wanted to see what the Raspberry thing was all about. And what I found is that it is quite quite a bit slower. Uh, on the UI when you're trying to um, update things uh, this is the orange pie yep. this is the orange pie here the, the dashboard for the orange pie um, and this one here is the dashboard for the raspberry pie now this is purple because this is a, a new dashboard that I'm trialing out this is a uh, one by a, 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 an Italian ham radio operator He's customised it for uh, apparently for uh, Yaesu System Fusion, um, and this is his website here. So uh, there it is. There. Well, look, the best thing I think is if you look at Pi Star EA7EE. That's the best place. To go and have a hunt for that, and you'll see this distinctly purple um, dashboard on his page, and you can download it for there. And that's the version specifically for uh, Yaesu System Fusion. Uh, or C4FM systems. Um, now, when I was hunting for Pi Stars, I also came across this board, and I thought to myself, well, okay, so what's the difference? Well, the main difference, uh, the main difference is this board has no radio on it. This board is the radio, and there's the radio chip. Uh, this board here is just the DSP side of things, and it comes out as audio. So what it allows you to do, this is my knock-up with one of those boards. And again, we've got a orange pie on the base of it. Um, with the cooling fan, because it needs it. And the modem in here has audio output, which I feed into my, well... At this stage, I'm feeding it into an FT817, little Yesu, and it goes in and it goes into the packet modem input, so the, it's the audio straight into it. And then when this little fella's on packet, it becomes the radio. Instead of just uh, the, a chip being the radio, the whole transceiver's the radio. So then I can communicate with this radio to that radio, which now does digital because of this board, so it gives me a greater range. So that's what this sort of hat, and it's called an HS hat, um, is for. Now it's not to be confused with a, another type of modem that's being sold on the internet, which is a, let's see if we can find one. Um, there's this sort of hat here. Um, now this is a, a dual hat. So this is like having two of those, right? If you like, two. Um, well, it's got two transceivers. This one's only got one and the one controller. This one has got two and the one controller. Now, I'm not quite sure why you need two transceivers. Uh, I guess if you wanted to do duplex or I guess if you wanted to do um, DMR and Fusion on the one hotspot at the same time. I'm not sure. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know why you'd want two transceivers. Anyway, I didn't think it was any be of any benefit, so I didn't buy it. Um, okay, and that's pretty much it. Well, there's not much happening on uh, America Link at the moment. Um, I was hoping to show you the difference between 
Oh, here we are. There's... That's a signal there, and we've got the other modem coming out of my other transceiver here. And I'm hoping that someone comes up so we can hear the echo difference. Oh, it was just a, a quick key then. Um, I'm not going to key up because... Okay, hopefully that came through. You would have heard that this one went off first, uh, shortly followed by this transceiver. So we had this Raspberry Pi goes to that transceiver, the orange Pi goes to this transceiver. So you can see there's a definite lag for the Raspberry Pi. All right. Um, I guess that's all I wanted to show you at this stage. Um, if there's any interest, I might do videos on how I made all of this or whatever. Let me know in the comments if you want another video on something to do with these um, these uh, hotspots. Okay, 73s for now. ZL1 CVD. Cheers.